is my Nerf Blaster so dumb? Computers, they're for nerds. I had a rail with nothing on it, so I put a sight there because it looks pretty. It doesn't help me aim. I'm Walcom S7, and what's in your wallet? Because the thing we're talking about today is uh, gonna be kind of expensive, and I don't know if I can do an objective video review about it because I love it so freaking much. This is a thing that I have wanted on a Nerf Blaster for a very, very long time. This video is sponsored by The Ridge. When was the last time you paid attention to your wallet? Not what's in it, but what it is. It might be decades old. It's been through a lot sitting in your pocket. Retire that poor thing and upgrade to the future with The Ridge. No extra bulk, that's The Ridge way. Wallets and EDC gear made of premium materials and over 30 different styles and colors like this Forge Ember Carbon Fiber Ridge Wallet with room for up to 12 cards and the ability to carry cash and extras on a clip or strap. Better yet, combo it with the Forged Ember Carbon Fiber The Ridge Key Case with room for up to two to six keys and and easily clips onto your person or sits in a key ring to eliminate the jingle and free up your inventory. Pick up your own Ridge wallet, key case, or combo bundle using my link ridge.com forward slash walcom and save up to 40% on your purchase if you order before December 22nd. But you'll only save if you use my link ridge.com forward slash walcom. Thanks again to the Ridge for sponsoring this video and opening my eyes to the future of wallet technology. And that thing is a... There's... I don't know what the product name would be. I don't know how you would describe it other than... It's a site with a screen and a computer and the screen shows you a whole bunch of stuff including nice graphics and, and gives you a video gamey customizable reticle and it also displays information like how many darts you have left in your mag, your battery level and so forth. And then also you can change like how fast your flywheels are spinning, how fast the blaster fires, you can change the modes of fires, it can shoot one dart, no dart, all the darts and everything in between with each trigger pull. How fast those flywheels spin up, how fast they slow down, the delay between you pulling the trigger and it firing a dart, and virtually everything. This does it all as far as I can tell. And I say that as a disclaimer because I don't have any instructions for this. Thankfully, all the menus are in English, but I have no clue what this thing might be fully capable of. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This is the one I prepared before we started, and this, well, it's a Nerf Elite Rapid Strike CS18. It's a blaster that's been around for almost a decade now, and if you wanted to take this thing right now, shove in a 200 FPS cage, shove a new pusher in there, and make it shoot really hard and really fast, you can still do that, because flywheels are pretty wonderful. But if you want some extra features, things you might want to change, well, that's where this comes in. This is one of the easiest drop-in kits for select fire and God knows what else more that I've ever seen for a blaster, and it's the first system I have ever seen that actually gives you a screen heads-up display in a site that is amazing. It is so cool. The camera will never do it justice. We're talking about a screen being projected onto a lens that you look through, not just a red dot, but a full color screen. All right, we're gonna do things like this because watching me install it step by step would take forever. This is gonna be a lot quicker. So step one, all this stuff in your rapid strike, get rid of it, trigger, pusher, everything. That is all being replaced. It's all drop in. You don't have to do anything special. The actual scope, fits in the slot where this fit in right up here that connects to your top rail. It just fits in there. That's it. Connect everything together. Pretty simple, pretty easy. The pusher normally works with full length darts, just like the original one, and you'll have to modify it in some way. I literally just glued bits of plastic to it. Originally it works like that, and now it looks like that, because that is the perfect length for me to use half length darts in this rapid strike. The sensor, which is right there, this plate is mandatory. That sensor is a dart detection sensor, and it has to actually see the foam dart to work. There's no way to disable that. The entire system apparently relies on that. Flywheel cage. If you use this product, you can in fact use it with a stock flywheel cage. And this is the only part of this that will require soldering. Power leads and everything are pre-soldered by default. However, you will have to solder to a flywheel cage. This is the stock one. It will work for that. However, this kit only works with lipos. Therefore, you'll probably kill your cage really quick. 
I put in a Band of Blasters cage because I'm a maniac, but any 3S cage will do. This is meant for a 3S setup, I believe. So at the bare minimum, you will need to solder two wires, positive and negative, to the flywheel cage to get the system up and running. Other than that, it's essentially a drop-in kit with the exception of this piece right here. You could just tear it out and never use it. However, if you want to keep it, you will have to cut pieces out of it, just the little ribbing and stuff inside there. This is every single piece in the kit. You've got the trigger system right here. This does have a dedicated rev trigger and a firing trigger. You could use the rev trigger if you want. Otherwise, if you just pull the firing trigger, it will rev and fire the blaster. You've got the pusher. The pusher is meant for full length dart. It has a sensor in the back of it and it's powered by an N20 motor. This thing has bearings all over it. Seriously, every part of this pusher is guided by a bearing which means it's incredibly nice and smooth. This goes in your magwell. It replaces the wire run on the original thing. This connects to your scope. Everything else connects to this. You've got two bare wires here that get soldered to your flywheel cage. And here's your power connector. This little piece right here, you can't really see it in there too well, but there's a dart sensor right there. That senses your darts to make sure that it has darts in the magwell and it has to see darts in order for this kit to function. And last but not least, you've got the actual scope itself, a pretty hefty unit, although it is made out of 3D printed plastic. It's got uh, multiple lenses in it. The front, I don't know really, but it appears to be soldered. It could be like an active tinting mechanism. I'm not entirely sure, but it is a dark lens that goes in front of that. And then of course, down in there, you've got the actual screen that that gets reflected onto. It is a really, really cool system. And you've got controls on one side, this button, and of course it's a twisty knob. You've got a thing right there. I assume that's for updating firmware or something. I'm not entirely sure, but, but it is a micro USB port. You've got an Allen key right here that fits into the scope that is accessible when it's installed, which can be used for minor adjustments on this thing. This knob right here does your selections. There's the actual brains of everything and the SD card. The SD card holds the actual files, the graphics and everything for the scope and they can be changed. It's a series of 30 images that can be changed so you can make your HUD look however you want. It also has a speaker that is, I guess, supposed to make sounds. Uh, the one I installed doesn't seem to work right now. So that's a bummer. Now this actual unit, the JS Black Tech, I believe is a manufacturer, is a seller on Taobao. So if you can navigate Taobao and you have a middleman that could buy things for you and ship it to you, then that's also an option. You could bypass NF Strike completely if you chose. NF Strike did send me the kit for review, so a link to NF Strike will be down in the description below. Now let's talk about operation because that's the next thing that's gonna come up. And I'm gonna tell you the number one thing if you buy this kit, if there's anything you take away from this video, those of you that already bought one and tried to install one probably had a lot of problems because it's a computer and computers can be dumb too. This thing has an optical dart sensor. The entire function of the blaster revolves around this optical sensor. So when I put a normal magazine with a black foam dart in there and located it in the mag, it couldn't, it was telling me it needed to reload. I spent hours fiddling, trying to figure out what I could do. I tried every dart and some were better than others, but nothing was consistent. And I was about to give up completely this button right here, it is a knob. It controls everything on your screen. If you press it once, it brings up a normal brightness setting. You can twist it to lower and increase the brightness. Clicking the button twice will bring up a different menu that allows you to change some rudimentary things like how many darts it thinks is in your magazine. And that's also how you adjust your power settings and everything like that. Features that you would want immediate access to. But there's a third menu. If you tap it three times in a row, this is the one that can get you in trouble. This is the one where if you change things you don't understand, you could burn things out, you could damage things. I don't even know all the things it can do because I don't understand what values I'm changing. But there's one I figured out and that is the runout sensor. By default, it's set to 600, but they were smart enough to show you the value that it is currently reading on the same screen. So if the runout value is set at 600, but the value it's currently reading with a dart in there is 300. And when I remove the mag, the value drops down to 130. Well, you just set that runout value to, I don't know, 190. Uh, that's what I did. And now it works perfectly fine with every dart I throw at it. That is how you fix this thing. Otherwise you are going to hate yourself. Pro tip, 
they should probably just ship the thing with the runout value being set to 200 because I tried so many different darts and it didn't even matter because every single time the magazine is empty, no matter if I'm shining it a light or I'm shining my phone in there or what have you, it always read about 130. Now for $120 plus shipping, you get a lot. You get probably one of the smartest nerf blasters you could probably have, one of the easiest ways to get all those features into an existing shell and on top of all of that you also get a super cool sight do you need it no but it is awesome and everybody you show it to will love it i'm gonna forget something and i'm just trying this is where we get to the part of the video you obviously can tell i'm excited i love this thing i love everything about this thing it is 1000 percent worth the money to me my only problem is that i can't spend more money to get one that's not 3d printed Every part in it that you would care about is not 3D printed. The lens, obviously you can't 3D print a lens and all that kind of stuff, but the actual body of it is just 3D printed plastic. If I take this and drop it on this table right now, it will probably shatter into a million pieces. There is almost nothing preventing you from hacking this thing into virtually any blaster that uses a full auto mechanism and flywheels. If you are technically minded, I do believe you will have no problems cutting this thing up and putting it and designing parts, and if anything else, designing an entire blaster around this unit alone. Because it's that good, and you would actually want to do that. And I could go on forever. What I'm trying to tell you is, this thing is freaking cool. It is the coolest. I have had it for over a month now, and I love absolutely everything. It was worth all of the heartache, and that is rarely a thing I will say. And if you want it, there's a link down below. Hopefully they put out some English instructions and warn you about the dart runout sensor, because that was just a roadblock that I got lucky solving. I, I'm sure this video was a chaotic mess. I probably cut out parts that would be pretty important, but I think the main takeaway is there. And I really hope I see more cool stuff like this in the future.